Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem grid game from this afternoon's leak code contest. So we're given a two dimensional grid. It's two by N, so it's only gonna have two rows every single time, but the number of columns in each row could be really big. It's gonna be N. And we're given a little story about two robots. One robot is gonna go first, and then the second robot is gonna go right after the first robot. The robots can move either down or to the right, and they're gonna keep going until they eventually reach the bottom right position. They start at the top left and they reach the bottom right. And the first robot will go in a path where it will basically collect the values on each cell of the grid. And then once it's done that, those values will be turned into zero. So in you can see before the second robot actually has a chance to go along the grid, the positions that the first robot reached are have been changed to zero. And so the first robot wants to go in such a way that no matter what the second robot does, the second robot's maximum possible uh, values that it can collect, the points it can collect, is going to be minimized. So what we're also told is that both robots are going to play optimally, and basically by optimally, the first robot, what it wants to do is minimize the number of points that the second robot can collect. And the second robot wants to maximize the number of points that it can collect. So the first robot wants to take all the good ones so that the second one can't collect them. But when the second one goes, right now you can see it has a choice. It has a choice of either going down this path to collect the one or it can go to the right to collect the four. Of course, the second robot wants to maximize the points it can collect, so it's gonna choose the four. And our return value in this case is going to be how many points is the second robot gonna collect if both robots play optimally, and now we understand what they mean by optimally. So this problem isn't super difficult, but there are some definite tricks that you really need to understand. You really need to understand what a prefix is and what a postfix is, specifically prefix and postfix sums in this case. And the reason is you can see that the first and second robot are both gonna travel in paths such that in the first row, they're gonna have some prefix of the first row, and in the second row, they're gonna have some postfix of the second row of each of the rows that were given, right? So if we wanted to go through every single path that the first robot could go, and what would be the sums of each of those paths, we can do that in n time, where n is the number of columns that we have, if we calculate the prefix and postfix sum which is pretty easy to do. Let, let's just do that here. So in the first row, we're gonna get the prefix sums. In the second row, we're gonna get the postfix sums. So we can do that pretty easily with a single loop. We're just gonna go value by value. Over on the left, you can see we have a two here. So we'll put a two here. Next, we have a five. So we're gonna put five plus the previous value, which is a two. So we're gonna put a seven here. And then here we have a four plus the previous value, that's 11. So you can see that this two represents the prefix up until two. This seven represents the prefix up until the second element and 11 represents the, the sum of the entire array. We're gonna do the same thing for postfix in reverse order. We're gonna have a one here, then we're gonna put a five here. Now your idea might be to be greedy, right? The first robot, maybe we can just be really greedy here, right? So for example, the first robot, it could either travel in a path like this one or like this one or like this one, right? And each of those paths is easy to get, right? Basically, if it, if it changed directions at this index i or maybe at this index i or maybe at this index i, right? Basically, we wanna, we wanna know when that robot changed rows because it can only change rows once. It can't go back up once it goes down. So you might think to be greedy, right? The first robot just takes the maximum amount that it can possibly do and then whatever the second robot will try to maximize its points and then we return the result. But that doesn't work in this case. That time complexity would be big O of N, but being greedy in this problem doesn't work. And to be honest, the way I figured that out was by failing the submission, but there is a better way to solve this problem. And it relies on a really small trick that you might gloss over, but take a look at this grid over here on the left. Notice how we go in some path over here right now, 
When we go in that path, we basically split the cells, right? This red line here split the cells. There's a group of cells over here and there's a group of cells over here. All of the other cells, right? In this case, these one, these zeros over here, right? They are n no longer relevant, right? They're gonna be zero, we can't really add them. But there's a group of cells over here and a group of cells over here that Robot2 can go. Now, we could have had a bigger grid, right? We could have had some more uh, positions over here and some more positions to the left, right? But no matter what, take a look at this purple section, right? Like let's say Robot2 uh, two, a robot or the first robot traveled along this right no matter what there's going to be a group of cells over here or a group of cells over here right to the bottom left or top right and the second robot can only collect one of these groups it cannot collect both of them no matter what and it's kind of obvious once you actually look for that pattern right just by looking at it how could possibly robot two collect both of them it either stays on the top row or it goes immediately to the bottom row it can't collect both of these groups so what we want to do with robot two is basically check okay what's the sum of these cells how could we do that easily by using our prefix, right? We could take the sum of the entire row minus the prefix of just this section, and then that would give us the sum of this portion, right? And actually, as I explain this problem, I realize I probably could have solved this problem with two prefix arrays, right? There's probably not even a need for having the postfix. So that's probably how I'm gonna code this up when we get to the coding section. But for now, uh, you know, you can just rely on the idea of a prefix sum. I think that'll make it simpler because this bottom left section, we can just get this area using the prefix sum. Right, that'll be pretty easy for us. And of course, the second robot will want to maximize this, right? So it'll take uh, the you know the area at the bottom left and top right, and we want to take the max of these two areas, and that's what the second robot will want to do. But we have to add an element of brute forcing to this problem, right? Because we want to know no matter what the second robot does, if it plays optimally, what's the max number of points it can get. But the first robot wants to play optimally too. So the first robot, how is the first robot going to travel? It's kind of complicated. So we have to kind of brute force this. So what we're going to do is suppose the first robot traveled like this. And how would we represent that? We would say I equals zero, meaning that the first robot basically changed rows at uh, column I, which in this case is zero, right? That's one way it could travel, or it could travel like this, which it actually did in the picture over here, right? It could travel like that, which would mean that it traveled on uh, row I or column I equals one, right? That's when it swapped rows. And in each of these cases, we would want to take, okay, the remaining chunk on the left and the remaining chunk on the top right, take the max of those two, and that's what the second robot is going to want to get. And we want to run through each of these possible cases. So the last case would be this if the first robot traveled like this. And then the second robot would be able to get th collect this uh, points, right? And of, among all of these possibilities that I just showed you, we want to return the one where the second robot collects the minimum number of points. Because that's what the first robot is trying to do. It wants to minimize the number of points that the second robot can collect. So then this is how we do it. And if you notice... Uh, using prefix sums and postfix sums if you really want to, you can calculate these amounts in O of one time, but obviously we do have to run through the first row. I could do this, it could do this, or it could do this. It can go in each of these N columns, right? So the overall time complexity is going to be big O of N because we do have to iterate through every single one of these columns. But other than that, the solution is pretty straightforward. Of course, we have O of N memory to store these prefix sums, but that's not too bad. So now we can jump into the code. Okay, so now let's get into the code. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take the dimensions of the grid, like the number of rows that we have, or rather the number of columns, which I'm gonna assign to N. So, and then I'm gonna do a two prefix sums, one for each row, so prefix sum row one, prefix sum row two. Initially, I'm just gonna set these to the clone of the grid row of each of these. So grid row zero, we can make a copy of that and assign it to prefix sum row one and 
do the same with the second row. And now we'll actually compute the prefix sum. So an easy way to do it is just like this in uh, Python. So we'll just do a for loop going from one all the way to the end of each of the arrays. We don't have to start at the beginning because the prefix sum for the first element is already calculated, but it's going through every other element. So prefix uh, at index i is just gonna be whatever the value is already there plus the previous value that we calculated, right? Similar to what I showed you in the drawing picture. So we can just take uh, i minus one and add that to there. And then we can just copy this line and do the same thing with the second prefix row. And now we're gonna set our result initially equal to infinity. And remember this result is the number of points that the second robot can collect. And initially we're setting it to infinity because the first robot wants to minimize this. So it'll make a little more sense as we go through it. But so for I in range N, we're going through every single spot. And the reason why we're doing that is because remember the first robot, it could uh, cross at any of those indices. So that's what we're trying to do. Now we wanna know the second robot. Let's say that the first robot, uh, you know, intersected at or crossed over at this index I. How much could the second robot collect from the top row? It could basically collect everything after index I, right? So the top row would basically be the prefix sum of the entire row one uh, until the end, which we can get like this, negative one is the last index in Python. So the prefix sum of the entire thing minus the prefix sum up until uh, index i. So this is what's remaining in the top row for the second robot to collect. Now we could do the same thing for the bottom row. What's remaining for the second robot in the bottom row, it's basically the prefix sum in the second row up until index i, but not including index i, which this that's the default behavior for this expression in Python. This will go up until index i, but not including index i, which is what we want. So this is the top and bottom row. Our uh, second robot can only go to one of these. It can either collect the top row or the bottom row. Of course, it wants to collect the maximum. So that's what we're gonna do here, right? The maximum of that. So this is what the second robot can collect. Of course, the first robot wants to minimize what the second robot can collect. So what we're gonna do is when we actually assign our result, we're gonna assign it to the minimum of what it already is and of what the second robot can collect in this case. Because remember, the, the second robot only has a choice of what it can choose from the top row or the bottom row, but the first robot can choose what index i it's actually gonna cross over at. So that's why we have to go through this entire loop and then you know take the minimum at the end because the first robot wants to make sure that this is minimized. But after all that is done, we can go ahead and actually return the result. Okay, I feel dumb because remember pre row two is already a prefix sum row, so we don't have to you know slice this. So sorry for explaining that. You know, index i will basically be the prefix sum up until index i. So we really want this to be index i minus one. But technically, if i is zero, this is gonna be an index out of bounds error, so let's fix that real quick. I guess this is why you keep your code readable in case you have to go back and modify it, but so yeah, let's do this, index. So this is what a bottom is gonna be assigned to if i is greater than zero, else it's just gonna be zero. So let's hope that this actually works now. Okay, so I just submitted it and scrolled down, and as you can see, it was accepted. We did kind of get tripped up at the end, but that just shows you I'm human just like all of you guys. So hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon to further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.